The Five Nights at Freddy's franchise has spanned across 10 years, but many mysteries still remain unsolved to this day. And one of the most complicated and confusing mysteries from the franchise is Midnight Motorist. This minigame has been the point of discussion for years now, with the biggest argument being these footprints left behind outside of the broken window. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to solve who left these footprints behind, and why it connects the Golden Freddy in a way I haven't seen be discussed before. So why do I believe that the physical Golden Freddy animatronic was the one that left behind these footprints in Midnight Motorist? Like I mentioned, there are a lot of mysteries that come from Midnight Motorist, and besides Willie Mapton being Orange Guy, the community seems to disagree with every point in mystery from this minigame. Especially the footprints outside of the window that are arguably the most confusing and complicated aspect of Midnight Motorist. Right at the end of the minigame, we find these animatronic footprints outside of a broken window, and they're the only footprints throughout the entire minigame. So who do these footprints belong to, and why are they outside of this window at this given point in the timeline? Well, some of the biggest and most popular theories around these footprints are that they either belong to one of the Springlock animatronics, the Funtime animatronics, or that they were illusions that just William Mafton could see. Now what I think is the most likely, and what I personally believe in as I'm going to cover this theory in this video, is that the footprints belong to Fredbear or Golden Freddy. Again, this is a very popular theory that already exists, but my explanation and reason into why it's Golden Freddy is something I haven't seen before that answers part of Midnight Motorist. With that reasoning being, the idea that the physical Golden Freddy animatronic left those footprints, that was actually the the crying child trying to return home. The evidence for my reasoning comes from the survival logbook and from the Fazbear Fright novels. In the Citrus story, there's an animatronic that contains the spirit of two kids named Andrew and Jake. Andrew is a victim of Willie Mafton who is a very vengeful spirit. Jake is revealed to not be killed by Willie Mafton but was surrounded by a plushie that had a walkie talkie inside of it. This directly mirrors what we see with Cassidy and the crying child. Cassidy the more vengeful spirit was killed by Willie Mafton and the crying child is the one who wasn't killed by William but still died tragically but they both possess one single animatronic. In the Stitch Faith stories, we learn that they both possess different parts of the animatronic. Andrew possesses the body while Jake possesses the head. Because Jake possesses the head, he is in control of the animatronic's movement and he can see the outside world. While Andrew possesses the body, he can't see anything or move the animatronic. What's also made clear is that they both don't remember much from their past and that they can talk to each other from inside of the animatronic. This also directly mirrors the events of the survival logbook. Cassidy and the crying child both possess the same animatronic, Golden Freddy, and they talk to each other inside of the animatronic. For example, in the survival logbook, Cassidy asks the crying child, what do you see? And the crying child responds with, I can't see. The crying child also has lines like, I hear sounds and I'm scared. So again, by using the parallel in the books for evidence in the games, we know that Cassidy controls the body but can't move the animatronic itself, while the crying child controls the head and can't control the animatronic's movements. So because the crying child can't control Golden Freddy, what if he controlled it to move to the Aftons and to his house, where he stood outside of this window leaving behind these footprints. Although Golden Freddy has had multiple appearances throughout the franchise, it's clear that they have all been illusions. That's why Golden Freddy can randomly appear in your office, and in FNAF 2, he even fades in and out, again supporting the idea that these appearances were just illusions. After the bite of 83, we know Golden Freddy was retired to the first Freddy Fazbear's Pizza where the missing children incident took place, but after this, it's a complete mystery where the physical Golden Freddy animatronic resided. So what if at one point it was at the Afton family house, again controlled by the crying child? In the conversation between the two spirits can be applied to Midnight Motorist. When the crying child says, I can't see, this could be applied to how the minigame takes place at midnight. It would be pitch black by this point, which is why he simply shouldn't be able to see. And with the line, I hear sounds, this could be referring to the heavy rain during Midnight Motorist. At the start of the minigame, the rain is very quiet and the loudest noise is the actual music for the minigame. But as you go deeper into the minigame, the rain drowns out the music and by the end of it, it's the only thing you can hear. Which feels like an important decision that might connect to Golden Freddy and what he's hearing. And the crying child controlling Golden Freddy would also explain the rain being an issue in the spring locks. Whenever an animatronic is brought into the discussion when theorizing the footprints, the rain immediately raises a red flag as we've seen in the franchise before how badly rain can affect an animatronic. Like in the puppet minigame, where we clearly see how the rain causes the puppet to malfunction. And we also know that water causes spring locks to malfunction causing them to activate, so we know a person couldn't be in this animatronic in Midnight Motorist as it would have malfunctioned or the spring locks would have activated. Activated. But if it was instead the crying child controlling the empty Golden Freddy animatronic, then it wouldn't malfunction nor would the spring locks activate. It would just be the crying child controlling Golden Freddy as he's trying to return home. Another line he leaves in the logbook is, I'm scared, and when the crying child was scared, we know all he wanted to do was go home. In FNAF 4, the crying child was forced to stay at Fredbear's family diner for multiple nights, but he always tries to escape it by going home. So if the crying child was trapped inside of Golden Freddy and he was scared, then it makes perfect sense that all he would want to do 
was return home. And this Stitch Wraith continues to prove this theory in FNAF Into the Pit. In this game we follow Oswald, and like in FNAF 4, there are multiple areas and maps to explore like Oswald's house. While in Oswald's house, there's a chance that you can spot this Stitch Wraith outside of your window staring at you, the same way Golden Freddy would be outside of the window in the Afton family house. Because we've already established that the Stitch Wraith is a parallel to the character of Golden Freddy, then we can apply the same parallel to the Stitch Wraith role in Into the Pit, where he's right outside of the window just like Golden Freddy would be in Midnight Motorist. Now by no means is this theory perfect, the lines from the survival logbook can be taken into any context and can be used for anything, especially with lines like I'm scared which can mean anything. And throughout the FNAF franchise we've never seen an example of the crying child physically controlling Golden Freddy, and in general we don't know much about Golden Freddy in the ways controlled by Cassidy and the crying child. And if this was Golden Freddy, then why can't we find any other footprints and why can't we find him anywhere else in the minigame? Again, it's not perfect, but the idea of the crying child having a role as Golden Freddy in not only Midnight Motorist, but in the franchise as a whole is something that I think is extremely overlooked by the community. So a great way to give the crying child a bigger role as Golden Freddy is through Midnight Motorist and him being the animatronic outside of the window that left these footprints. It should also be worth mentioning that the books in the FNAF franchise are still a mystery on their own. It's never been confirmed if the books are directly canon to the games or if they're just used to solve certain parts of the game and mysteries. In this theory and in most theories, the books are just used as a parallel to the games to solve small mysteries and questions, but what do you guys think? Are the FNAF Fazbear Fight books canon in any way and should we be using them to solve lore from the games? But with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Midnight Motorist and on Golden Freddy. So what do you guys think? What do we know about Midnight Motorist? Who is Orange Guy? When does it take place? What is Juniors? Who is the person watching TV? Is it Michael Afton or Miss Afton? Who is the person who ran away and was the one who broke the window? Is Golden Freddy the animatronic in Midnight Motorist that left these footprints behind? Remember, nothing in this video is confirmed and everything stated is just a theory, so make sure to comment down below your thoughts and theories, and make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and thank you guys so much for watching!